1855. It's Mississippi. It's summer, so it's real hot. And there's a man walking down a pathway between two cotton fields. Cotton is high. He's hot. He's tired. He's been working all day in the fields with about 80 other slaves on the same plantation. And he's got a song stuck in his head. You know, that happens sometimes. You just, you're not thinking about it, but there's music in your head. Mostly he's hot, tired, and hungry. But he's walking down this pathway trying to get home. And he's got the song that the slaves have been singing all day stuck in his head. So he's just going, mm-hmm. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, it's hot today. Wow. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah, ah. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where is my girlfriend? Huh, that's weird. I wonder where Maggie is. <laughs> She's always walking with me. I, I can't get rid of her when I want to get rid of her. I wonder. I don't know, anyway, oh well. Uh, 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 uh. And then up in front of him, it's, it's kind of dark, almost dark, but up in front of him down the road a little ways, he sees someone walking. And again, without really consciously thinking about it, the music and the image come together, and the next thing you know, he's singing, Who's that walking down this lonesome road? Well, <laughs> It looks like Maggie. I can tell by the way she walks. Well, you're all old enough to know that if he can tell by the way she walks, he's been, you know, like paying attention. So anyway, then he starts thinking to himself, well, what's up with this? How come she ain't walking with me? I mean, am I all of a sudden not cool enough for her to walk with me? I'll tell you one thing. I ain't going down this dirt road by myself. Uh-uh, not me. I'm way too cool to walk down this road all by myself. If I can't take her with me, I'm going to find me someone else. Well, by the time he gets to the slave quarters where he stays, now he's aware of the song. And he's one of those people, like maybe one or two of you are, who's always just making a lot of racket. So nobody pays much attention to him when he starts standing around going, ain't going down this uh dirt road by myself. Nobody really listening to him at all, except for one little kid who's running around in the yard. And his name is, well, we don't know his name either. We'll, We'll never know these guys' names. But this little kid, let's today let's call him Jefferson. And Jefferson hears this song. It sticks in his head. He doesn't know it's there, really, until about 10 years later. After the Civil War has come and gone, and the slaves' lives are not so different than they were before the Civil War, but one thing that has changed, and that is that the slaves, most of the slaves in Mississippi, now have a day off. Sunday is off. So on Sundays, Jefferson and his friends get together and play music on instruments that they made themselves. Now, Jefferson's banjo wasn't quite as nice as this banjo, but it worked. He made it out. He made the drum part out of, a, you know, parts from an old uh, cotton wagon. He tanned the hide of some small animal to, to make the drum and carved the neck out of a piece of oak tree limb. And, and his friends have also put together primitive instruments, guitars, fiddles, other banjos. And they get together every Sunday to play these instruments. Well, this particular Sunday... Jefferson's trying to think of something new that he could play. And he remembers that song that's in his head that his uncle used to sing about the dirt road. So he tries to figure out how it would go. He thinks, uh, let's see. Who's that walking? Who's that walking? Down that, down that, down that lonesome road. Figures out how it would go. And he takes him, he goes over to the plantation next door and teaches the chords to his friends, and they all fool around with it and kind of add words and and chords and changes and stuff. And by the time he comes home that night, he's got a brand new song to sing. He walks home going, who's that walking down this lonesome road? Who's that walking down this lonesome road? I think it's Maggie.
the next Sunday, Jefferson goes to the same plantation and they fool around with the song some more. Everybody likes the song. But several people that were there the first week are not there the second week. They're at some other plantation teaching the song to some other people. And this process happens over and over in the weeks and months and years that follow. And before too long, people all over that part of Mississippi and a little bit up in Tennessee and Arkansas sing this song when they get together. Ain't going down this dirt road by myself. If I can't take you with me, I'll find somebody else. Well, time goes by and eventually the song finds its way to a place called Dockery's Farms. Dockery's Farms is a huge plantation up in Mississippi. It's still there. And at one point in time, Dockery Farms had over 2,000 slaves. And eventually, uh, by the time this song was, was probably poking around there, there were at least 2,000 people living on that farm that worked there. And there was one guy on that farm named Charlie Patton. Now, Charlie was, uh, is, is one of those tremendously gifted musicians that come once in a million. And he, like every other person of his color, had to work on the farm. It didn't matter that he was a great musician. He had no choice. You either owned the plantation or you worked on the plantation. That was the way it was. But he would give anything not to do that farm work that he hated so much. And his lucky day came one day when Mrs. Dockery, the rich plantation owner's wife, got a guitar. She ordered it from a catalog, and it would have looked about like this. This is called a parlor guitar. This particular one was built in 1897. It may be the oldest guitar you'll ever see. And all guitars were about this size at that time. The guitar comes in the mail, and Mrs. Dockery has it tuned up by one of her uh, assistants, the way that the booklet talks about. And she's one of these people who is, of course, very wealthy and, and used to getting anything she wants without working very hard. So she's expecting to just play the guitar. And when she picks up the guitar, all freshly tuned to its proper tuning, she goes to play it, and it sounds like this. And Miss Dockery says, Well, my, my, I can't play that. That sounds horrible. There's no way I can play that. I guess I, guess I better give this guitar to Charlie because he'll know how to play it. And maybe he'll play for me. <laughs> well, she's right about one thing. Charlie can play it. But the very next morning, Charlie's gone. He takes that guitar, and he starts wandering around the Mississippi Delta around the region nearby, singing these songs that they've been messing with on Sunday afternoons. On a Sunday afternoon, you might find Charlie Patton sitting on a hay bale in front of a hardware store. The owner of the hardware store has given Charlie 10 cents to sit there all day, hoping that people who come to see Charlie play will at that hardware sign and remember they need to pick up some screws or nails by a hammer saw or something like that later that night Charlie might walk out four or five miles into the cotton fields to some shack where they're having a party you make another dime or two get something to eat something to drink Never did have to go back and work on that farm. Charlie would sing like this. Who's that walking down that lonesome road? Well, I think it's Maggie. If 
I can't take you with me, I'll find somebody else. Now, Charlie Patton is a real person. We know about Charlie Patton because he was one of the first people in history to sit in front of a microphone with a guitar and record what we now call a blues song. And one of the first songs he recorded was called the Down the Dirt Road Blues. I ain't going down this dirt road by myself If I can't take you with me Well, eventually, Charlie finds his way to another plantation in a place called Marigold, Mississippi. And in Marigold, there is a, a young man named Sunhouse. Sunhouse can't make up his mind whether he's going to be a preacher or whether he's going to be a blues singer. Can't do both. And Sunhouse has one of the new guitars, which have sort of been popping up lately, a lot of new ideas, because the parlor guitar was so quiet. There were a lot of people who were trying to figure out new ways to make the guitar louder. And the men who designed this one were two brothers from Czechoslovakia. They immigrated to America, and they had an idea. They thought that if they made the guitar out of metal, just like an old Model A or a Model T, and that it might be louder. And then they figured that under this thing that looks like you could drain spaghetti in the sink, under there is what looks just like a speaker, just like an amplifier speaker or a stereo speaker, except it's made from what they called spun tin. And the idea was that the strings would pass over this speaker, be amplified, and the sound would be louder. Now, <laughs> I, would not, I would not say that it sounds better than a guitar, but it's definitely louder. One other thing besides just the guitar that Sun House did he didn't know the correct way to tune, like this. He had no idea about that. So he was kind of on his own. And he came up with something in his ignorance, if you will, that I think is pure genius. He took his guitar and he tuned it like this. To a chord. So that with only one hand and a little rhythm, you had something that sounded quite a bit like music. And if you wanted to change chords, all you needed was one finger. And if you were a 13-year-old boy in America and you had your guitar tuned like that with one finger, you could go like this. But what really made Sun House music and his friends' music really stand out in the world was they would take the neck from an old bottle, wine bottle, a pop bottle, medicine bottle, whatever, break the neck off, polish the glass edges off on a rock or a brick, and then they would apply that slide, as they called it, to the guitar, and they invented something that we call Mississippi Delta Blues. started playing this song, it picked up a little extra drama.
Thank you. After that, the song finds its way up to a hillbilly up in Kentucky. And this guy finds the song down in Memphis, Tennessee. By the time Jimmy Lee follows his mule, which is going all the way back from Memphis where he's heard this rockin' version on Beale Street, the, the mule has be given him the rhythm he can't get away from after three or four days, and the song takes on a whole other character, so it goes like this. And by the time Jimmy Lee finds his way back to Kentucky to teach the song to his band, The Skillet Lickers, sounds like this. Who's that walking down the road? Who's that walking down the road? Must be Maggie, tell by the way she walks. Walking down that lonesome road. And then it finds its way into the repertoire of the great country singer Hank Williams, and from there, it, it uh, goes back to Mississippi. Then the song represents the great black migration, the black exodus from the South in the 40s and 50s when the, when the factories invited people to come up and work in the factories and leave the South behind. And people like Muddy Waters showed up in Chicago fresh from the farm with a whole pocket full of songs. And one of the first things he bought was an electric guitar because they were brand new at the time. And he took his old songs and played them like this. You know what he sings. that walking down the road down that long old lonesome road who's that walking down that lonesome road but even though this is electric still sounds kind of rural, so it didn't take too long for a man named Jimmy Reed had his way with the song, and the next thing you know, it's been kind of greased up a little bit. We have the Chicago Shuffle. Tell me who's that walking down that lonesome road? Tell me who's that walking down that lonesome road? Well, I think it's Maggie. I can tell by the way she walks. Then everybody knows what happens next. The country music of someone like Hank Williams and the blues of someone like... Jimmy Reed kind of get all folded together by southern boys like Elvis Presley. And rock and roll is born. And before too long, you've got someone like Charles Berry from St. Louis, Missouri, singing a song, same old song, but playing it his brand new way. So Chuck Berry, yeah. Well, I ain't going down that dirt road by myself. I ain't going down that dirt road by myself. If I can't take you, I'm going to find somebody else. Ooh. 
And rock and roll just took over the airwaves. It was an incredible transformation from the early 50s to the mid 50s. It was unbelievable. And through a series of circumstances that the business, the big businessmen finally managed to kind of back off rock and roll with bribes and all kinds of other illegal things. And they managed to turn it off on the radio. And for a little while, there was no rock and roll in America. The radio was very boring. But our music, our blues, our rhythm and blues, our gospel music, our country music had found its way on recordings over to England. And bands like the Beatles managed to, to get an audience in America, and they came back here and, and what John Lennon called repatriated American music back to, our, back to its homeland. And then the Rolling Stones, right after the Beatles showed up, the Rolling Stones loved blues. And the way they did blues was quite different from the way we were used to hearing it. When the Rolling Stones got a hold of this song, it was a whole other animal. <laughs> Mick Jagger running from side to side on the stage. Like he'd being electrocuted or something. Parents were freaked out. And Mick sings, wow, wow. I ain't going down this road. My, my. I ain't going down this road. If I can't take you, I'll bring someone else along. Thank you. Well, this song is just a microcosm of America's great story of traditional music. The fact is, this song was one of many songs that were passed from hand to hand, over the color line, across mountains, over bridges, over rivers, over creeks, across oceans even, to become the great treasure of American music, what we call uh, traditional music. We're talking about jazz. We're talking about blues. We're talking about gospel music as we know it here in the South. We're talking about rock and roll. We're talking about R&B. All the music we all love so much. It's a grand story, and I'd like to tell you the rest of it sometime. Thank you. 